All right, hello and welcome back to Ashkabat Cats. Let's play that. Today, we're taking a look at Golden Axe. Now, the theme for this one is, how different will it be from the Genesis version? Looking at the screenshots? Well, I don't know. And, ooh, looks like they went the Ultra Beast um, control setup, where you got the bottom three, but you could also have it on the top one, if you were so inclined. Whoa. Whoa. First impressions, check out that resolution. I couldn't quite catch if this was the system 32 board. No, I think it was 16B. But like, dang. <laughs> you really miss a fair bit by being restricted to just that regular Genesis resolution. Plus, now you get to see what their names are. I, I mean, I'm sure it told you somewhere, somehow, somewhere, but like, it's pretty cool to see it in the actual title sequence itself. That being said, taking a look at just the graphics so far, it is impressive how close the Genesis version just looks like stills of Golden Axe. Because, I mean, also, yeah, Death Equals Adder. It's like, uh, okay, I guess his name is just Death Adder, but still. Because, I mean, you look at, like, just stills of this arcade game, you look at stills of the Genesis version, and it, it is surprisingly close. That being said... You can't really experience an arcade game, or say you've experienced an arcade game, until you've experienced it in motion. <laughs> Death Adder, what does he look like? Basically take just any any random enemy you fight against and just make him like twice as buff and twice as mysterious. But like... What was that? Was that story? <laughs> Is there a story to this game? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Cutscenes in my Golden Axe? That's <laughs> more likely than you'd think. That was nuts. Alright, so I've heard some hearsay about some sort of special attack. I've never used this ever before when I played the Genesis versions, but maybe that's why I always thought the Genesis versions were such a drag. Oh, okay. So there really is a death plunging blow. I don't know if this was a speed run or something. Also, why do the enemies get turned into like skeletons? But your buddy Alex, he's gonna stay there, a bloody reminder of your failings. <laughs> I feel like it was some sort of random gameplay I saw online of like somebody doing these like sweet power moves and in, in um what, what is this game called? Golden Axe, sorry. It's just, I get a little excited when I see a chicken leg. Gotta get him. <laughs> it's just as janky as it was an ultimate beast. <laughs> but now, it's jank working in my favor. Also, I like how he hits both ways. Or does he hit both ways? Wait, he doesn't. Holy cow. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> what? So when you hit attack, then he swings his tail. And when you hit attack, he swings his tail back. But most importantly, unlike this stupid Genesis version, he doesn't just, like, automatically swing both ways. Thus, like, wasting wasting your time, wasting your enemy's time, and, like, letting them get hidden. No. Well, this would be a great time for magic. No, instead, he only does, like, one swipe. Now, of course, he changes facing. But if you really wanted to, you could sw swoop around and then only do the one way. A little left attack action there. Are we are we done with level one? What? Wait, what? Is this gold dax and I'm having fun? That was like... Yeah, it went by in a flash. Even the bonus level went by too quick for me to collect both of them. Take a shortcut through the turtle village. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> but that entire level took like, what, 10 seconds? Like, well, okay, more like a minute or two, but like, dang, that was pretty, pretty adrenaline focused. I'm beginning to wonder if like a whole bunch of people, like their only experience to Golden Axe was the Genesis version. Cause I mean, again, Sega has included it in like every Sega Smash pack ever known to man and some imaginary ones that probably they didn't even release publicly. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good game, I guess, but 
This is one of those games where it's like, wow, you play the arcade version and it is a revolution. Revelation. Wow. <laughs> I also like how, while this guy is like totally ripping off like a health bar of me and he gets like this full combo in, he only gets the chance after I whiff the super special attack. So I can't even be mad. Ugh. That is pretty great though that like, the running jump attack down swipe I guess I guess the link down a is so hard to do because it really kind of adds some gameplay to this game where previously there was not a lot of gameplay because I mean yeah it kind of reduces the game down into like trying to get the mechanics of that down slashed in but frankly there wasn't a lot to golden sun I mean golden axe otherwise so I am welcome for all of the gameplay that it has to offer, even the self-imposed ones. Wow. <laughs> when I read the online fact that said enemies would try to dodge this attack, <laughs> they were not kidding. That is way cool, though, how their corpses just kind of litter the, <laughs> litter the ground. And then also, too, like, they, <laughs> they beat up the villagers. I don't know if that was actually something you could have conceivably included in the Genesis version. Maybe. I'm tempted to say yes, but probably not. But, like, wow. It is here, and it adds a significant amount of character to, like, the whole experience. Also, you can run on the dragons? I think you always could, but here it just feels so much more necessary. And enemies only take, like, what, two rounds to beat now? None of this faffing about with, like, Genesis version's alternate difficulties. Uh, enemies still <laughs> steal the animals. I remember that. That has always been a time-honored tradition of this game. <laughs> so I took too long to defeat the human enemies and it's like, well, you got the skeleton guy literally rushing in the... <laughs> what? 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 Okay. A few things just happened there that I, I think I need explained to me. One, was that the boss? Two... That skeleton guy, why did he, why did he like fossilize the same way all of the other people do? Also, there was no boss, what? This is crazy. This is crazy. I wonder though, with the Genesis version, did they like kind of slow it down and like sort of pad it with like this useless busy work just so that kids who were like renting it from their local blockbuster felt like they were getting their money's worth? Because I mean, on one hand, that sounds kind of scummy. On the other hand, have you seen the Golden Axe series on the Genesis? Like, basically, each game takes padding, padding the game, like, to the next level. It is impressive. Whoa, I killed that guy in one combo? This, this death swipe move, it is, like, so hard to do. It's basically a Captain Falcon me. But, like, when you do it, it is so worthwhile. <laughs> I love this, it just gave me this power beast, but also there's like two or three other beasts just kind of lying around so you can like choose, choose which overpowered beast is your favorite. <laughs> wow, I can't even believe that I, I pretended to myself that I had played Golden Axe. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't let you choose? Maybe it does and I just was a little too hasty, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. I love that. You're just like, is this broken? Is there a boss around here? <laughs> you pop open the door and the boss is like, I'm here. <laughs> These guys aren't the final boss, are they, for the level? No. On the right side, though, them being bigger than whoa you can throw them that being said them being bigger than i could reasonably articulate does mean they make a great target for the giant death stroke and the game just gave me like five more things of magic what if this was the genesis version it would have been like it would have just laughed at me it's like man you shouldn't have wasted all of your magic attacks on the the one guy but here we are and it's just like Hey, magic attack this next guy. We want you to experience the 16-bit splendor. And you know what? I am experiencing it. I am enjoying it very much. I am very impressed, though, 
by his ability to just swipe all in the air. Okay. Insert coins. Uh, I am I am pressing everything I can. Game over. Game over. That's the opposite of what I want to happen. Also, Golden Axe really did always just, like, rate your score. That's awesome. I guess my, my rating is Hensachi. Well, you know what? I, I also strongly suspect that the game does not let you change your character. So let's see. Does Hyrus Flare have other attacks? Also, too, I mean, the game progresses at a pretty quick clip. Although it is kind of funny how everybody seemingly knows Alex. Wait, what? What? <laughs> I wish I made a save state in real life. Is every character exactly the same? Let's try uh, Gillian Thunderhead. <laughs> the other two characters just vanish in a burst of flame as if, <laughs> as if a perfect metaphor to capture the loss of possibility. Oh, he actually has a golden axe. Because it's like you play golden axe and you're like, oh man, the golden axe, what's that? What? Excuse me, what? <laughs> what? Check out his special attack. <laughs> he just rolls back and attacks. That's pretty impractical, so I'm just going to stick with uh, Tyrus Flare for my second playthrough. My accidental second playthrough, but like, <laughs> that is pretty top tier silly. It's so hard to land that death blow, but it just changes the entire character of the game because it's like you nail it once and well do these characters die in one combo? I'm tempted to say they do, but <laughs> oh my gosh, and you even get that death anim or that death sound. Oh yes. <laughs> Whoa, look at this guy. Thinks he's immortal or something, taking like three or four rounds, and the other guy, it's like, man, I just managed to hit that guy <laughs> partially by luck, <laughs> and that took care of him. <laughs> As you're standing there, just like torturing that poor guy, <laughs> you are opening yourself up for a massive attack. You know what? Let's do something... Well, I have done it a lot in this whole series, but I have not done it a too whole lot in this whole Sega Astro City Mini series. Let's leave it at that. That was an awesome experience. That was the kind of experience. <laughs> the top is 50 points. Isn't that only like halfway down the ladder? So <laughs> even the best player is only vaguely better at this game than I am. That's a comforting thought. It's also a frightening thought. But I think I'm gonna leave well enough alone. Like, holy cow, looking at the recording, we're 13 minutes in. Like, three minutes of that was me messing up. Dang. You, you could conceivably play through a whole round of Golden Axe in, like, half an hour. That is mind-blowing. Because it's like, I feel like Genesis Golden Axe, it takes, like, five minutes to get through every stage. And then you, get, you just keep fighting and keep fighting. The enemies keep coming back until eventually the game, like, ends. And it's like, well... You have quite a bit of stamina, young kid. Or you run out of pseudo-credits. Because this game, it has real credits, of course, being an arcade game. Man. I mean, again, <laughs> I feel like there's more than enough Golden Axe gameplay out there to uh, sate your thirst if that wasn't enough. Because then, even on this channel, there's Golden Axe th uh, 2 for the Genesis. And for the longest time, that was actually the last video I did. Man, what a, what a game to end it on. So many hours of gameplay, some say that he's still playing it to this day. Anyway, if you are still super curious about the next Golden Axe follow-up, there is Golden Axe 3. The Revenge of Death Adder, which was never actually released to the Genesis. 
Yes, the Genesis had many games that purported to be the sequel to Golden Axe, but none of them was actually the sequel to Golden Axe. So you know what? This whole video was actually just a hype video for Golden Axe 3. Revenge of Death at... Wait. Now the Genesis versions have me confused. Anyway, Re Golden Axe Revenge of Death Adder is coming in the future. But as for now, we have Golden Axe, the regular one. In retrospect, it's actually kind of fortuitous that I like quit there because it's like, well, and then you see these skeleton guys. I mean, as fun as it is to um, like try to hit the enemies with like super cheap death blows, um, it kind of gets repetitive after a while and I feel like yeah 10 minutes is enough for you to like get in get out and just kind of enjoy it uh, anymore and it's like dang that's a little too much huh I wonder if that's how you guys feel when you watch my videos <laughs> and while I go ponder that this cat's got a scat you know what I thought ending it there would have been a little bit too too annoying i mean there's just too much good game left in this game that i kind of want to see what the, what else is there is and this time i made it over that jump so okay well, let's continue where we left off and oh i may have accidentally forgotten where it is i left off but that's okay because this is as close enough a point to return from as is any other man how do people commentate while they talk it is or how do people play and talk while they talk that is surprisingly difficult anyway on to final boss of the level there we go magic time Oh, wow. Are we actually that close to the enemy's castle? I mean, part of me wants to say it cannot be that easy, but at the same time, we are moving at a lightning pace. Man, that death blow, though, it's crazy. It almost makes me regret, like, using one of those, um, animals. Well, I feel like the death blow is just the missing piece of the puzzle. Now, granted, I feel like the death blow was always there, and I just was not aware of it. I guess that makes the, the arcade version superior, because it at least has, like, a marquee or something that... <laughs> yeah, the enemies, the enemies were doing that a lot when I replayed through this game. It was funnier when it happened to them, though. But I think, yeah, the death blow is just the missing puzzle... That just kind of unlocks the entirety of the combat in this game. And also that starts making it feel fair. Because otherwise, like, you have to actually just walk up to the enemy. And, like, I don't know, in a lot of beat-em-ups, that's, like, a decent approach option. But in this game, that is just the, the least safe thing you can do. Because it feels like, at least half the time, they can just start into a combo and just auto-combo. Whoa. Okay, these... I mean... I vaguely remember there being like weird shadow guys in the Genesis version. What the heck? These guys must have infinite health or something. I bet they're probably expecting me to get a little bit scared and use my magic. But I'm, I will not fall for such an obvious trap. <laughs> you shadow guys might look a little different, but you fossilize just like everybody else. Man, I don't remember... The background being quite so pink or quite so awesome in the Genesis version. So I guess reason number 576 why arcade version of Ultra Beast is worth re-experiencing or experiencing. Ooh. 
Ooh. Maybe it was a speed run that I saw <laughs> them using these old <laughs> these golden axe techniques. Oh, so this is just like the new normal now, huh? Like we've already beaten up too many human enemies. Now we have to make do with like crazy special supernatural enemies. Skeletons, phantom versions of normal enemies. That's what it's all about now. This is the new normal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's wrong? You guys afraid to be in the same plane of me for for some reason? Don't worry, guys. I don't bite. Death from above. Aw. I mean, in the Genesis version, magic was like that big thrill. And it's like whenever you got the chance, when it was appropriate and when it made sense, then you could occasionally indulge in a bout of magic. But... The, the crazy kill move, oh man, it is always vaguely inappropriate, and yet <laughs> you can always do it. It's great. I wonder, are there any other games with such like wildly impractical one-hit kill moves? Oh, I wonder if you could do like the ultra, ultra combo of like just stunning a dude and then doing the kill blow. Unfortunately, you like shoot way up on that screen. I mean, you fly higher than some of those NBA Jam guys. Also, wow, they are just like filling the screen with enemies. Yeah, I feel like they knew what was what. They're not gonna give you just one at a time because one at a time, I mean, you could handle that with your eyes closed, but two at a time, that presents a problem. That's enough out of you. Well, three rounds isn't so bad if you're... Oh, that was the level. Hey, hey, come on, come on, I want that. I need that. Come on, come on. I want to at least have as much magic as when I started and ended the level. Oh, nice. So now it's a secret eagle. Oh, the final battle begins. Wow, this game is not very long, but in a good way. Dang. Well, this is like one of those arcade games you just play over and over just just to experience the raw gameplay loop. And it's like story or visuals, whatever. No, it doesn't matter. It's all about how many enemies can you like super kill. And I mean, the fact that the enemies take a bunch of combos and hits. Here it just almost feels like more incentive to use that like crazy... Oh, he moved! At that last second, he moved. I don't know. I, I wonder what your level is based off of, but I can only imagine it is based on how many super kills you can do, how, how little damage you take, and so on. Okay, I guess maybe I'm getting a little old and I'm tired of risking it all for those super blows. Give me, give me one of these beasts, please. <laughs> yes, give me one of these Alter Beasts. <laughs> you know what the best part is? The guys who made Alter Beasts were probably working on this for like an entire year. Just like hiding in the secret, making Golden Axe. <laughs> and the whole time, they probably had no idea whether this would be any sort of success or not. <laughs> And then they released it, and man, was this a success. I don't know anything in the sales figures or whatever, but this game basically defined the Genesis early game. <laughs> oh, I see. Now, unfortunately, I believe these guys are just regular enemies at this point. But that's okay. They all die the same to magic. Oh, wow. This one-handed tosses you out of the way. He's like, you are officially irrelevant. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess it's strange to say at this point, but, like, something about Golden Axe just feels strangely fair with, like, the enemies and the actual beat-em-up gameplay. Because, I mean, yeah, sure... 
well, because you can do it like this. You can just like slam them away. And it's like, it's arguably even better than the jump attack. I, I, I still think jump attack is better, but you can do like crazy nonsense like that. And it's like, you can fight back. You can make the enemy's lives miserable too. Yeah, that's surprisingly generous. <laughs> Cause you beat them and then all of a sudden they just give you all of the all the magic it's almost like they're tricking you into this something tells me we won't be able to just crazy death attack this guy like normal well game's gonna trick me but <laughs> what can i say i like falling for these traps but it is pretty crazy how like this version of the game is just totally willing to give you magic. Like it's not afraid at all in any way, shape or form. It feels like the Genesis version was like basically congenitally like allergic to giving you any sort of magic. And it gave you like an initial round of magic just cause I mean, you have to give the character some magic so they know this gameplay mechanic exists, but like, like, you go through one of these mid-bosses, and yeah, the game just laughs at you. It's like, why'd you use all your magic, dummy? But then this game is like, all right, you just used all of your magic in a crazy blaze of glory? You gonna do it again? Something tells me that these guys are just gonna keep on coming. <laughs> oh, man, did I nail him with one of the awesome attacks? Is, is this actually Death Adder? <laughs> this, I mean, it kind of feels like Death Adder. <laughs> so I nail one of the skeletons with like the insta-kill attacks and it's like immediately <laughs> another skeleton takes its place. I mean, that is pretty great. You can like completely litter the screen with like the remains of dead skeletons, but I would, I would like to defeat the boss at some point in time. Okay, at this point in time, I will settle for damaging the boss. Where am I getting all of this magic? Oh, I bet it's when you respawn, then you get the magic. Well, if he can use this crazy land magic against me, I can use my crazy land magic against him. Wow, I had like five coins in at some point and they all just mysteriously vanished. I cannot even imagine what it was like to play through this game as a kid back in the day. Just like always feeling that you can get like one more insta kill in, but at the same time knowing that <laughs> your your credits are basically just forfeit. But dang. Oh, but what, it feels like we're actually making some progress against this, like, army of undead skeletons. Like, what the heck? They finally gave it a rest. I didn't know that they knew how to do that. Is this, is this it? Is this the finale? Oh, no. The skeleton's still there. But one more, two more. He's getting tired. I, I am too, but that's neither here nor there. Oh! What a way to end it. This can't be the final boss. This has to be a trick. Congratulations, what? That's it? So you're telling me Arcade Golden Axe is this super high octane experience that can be finished in like 20 minutes? Uh, just, just for your edification, this is not actually happening to me right now. Like, the characters of Golden Axe are not escaping through my TV and proceeding to beat me up and taking revenge. That is not happening, don't worry. Like, just to put this in perspective, this scene is like, what, I don't know, two minutes or something? Like, that is 10% of your Golden Axe playtime is just devoted to watching this scene. Like, that's how 
that's how crazy fast this whole game is and just imagine if you got another player with you then you're just like tearing through these people like like paper although i kind of imagine if you got two players going they're probably going to give you twice as many enemies it's only fair see you next game dang sega i can't wait to actually see you next game and now i got a lower score than before but that's a-okay what is up with these percentages are these like percentages of people that have ever gotten those scores because yeah okay fair well <laughs> did you see, did you see my deaths They're like stage one is like one stage two two stage three one stage four two stage five twelve <laughs> Yeah, that Death Adder guy, he kind of hard-bodied me a little bit. Well, I can't say my opinion on this game has changed at all, but like, dang. 20 minutes to like, play through Golden Axe, that's crazy. What kind of world do we live in? I guess it's the same world we've always lived in, but it's just... My perspective on things has shifted. Altered Beast, Golden Axe, they're actually really good games that just had semi-questionable Genesis ports. And I wouldn't have known it if it wasn't for this semi-questionable port of these arcade games on the Sega Astro City Mini. Now, that's not to say that the actual emulation is in any way questionable. Although, sadly, it doesn't doesn't quite compare to... Well, actually, I don't know. I was going to say it doesn't compare to the Mr.'s, like, FPGA, like, ultra, no, no lag or whatever setup. Although, I don't know. Maybe this thing... Because it, it doesn't just feel like they're using Android. It doesn't feel like there's any sort of lag built in. But still, it is kind of tragic that, like, the only official way to play these games, I guess if you don't own a Sega Saturn or a PS2 or something, is to play it on this, like, Astro City Mini, which is, like, this silly, <laughs> overpriced, like, mini console. Honestly, it's more of a toy than, like, a video game. And so, sadly... You won't, you, like, I don't know, this just won't be widely commercially available. Most people will have to know these games by their Genesis versions. Well, if you are a person who only knows these games through the, through the Genesis versions, please, please, play the arcade versions, play the arcade originals, emulate it if you have to, I don't know, maybe, well, don't, don't steal it from somebody who owns a PCB, but if you do know somebody who owns the PCB, I don't know, just kind of like knock on their door. Just, just ask very politely. I mean, a lot of these games are two-player anyway. They probably are jonesing for someone else to appreciate and experience these things to like such an extent that only they themselves have ever learned. Can you imagine somebody just playing through all of the arcade games in existence but only playing through all of them by themselves? Yeah, me neither. And on that slightly un <laughs> unfortunately self-referential note, I will continue my, my monologue. No, man, you, you should really experience these games. This, this is crazy. I didn't know that this existed. And yet, it always existed. To a certain extent, it existed before the Genesis versions ever were even like conceived of. This is crazy. It really does go to show you that the arcade was king back in the day, and home consoles were almost partially an afterthought, partially a toy line to a certain extent. I mean, dang. Yeah, it is kind of surprising how powerful just even, even using like one little bit of magic can be. Okay, so that kind of makes the ranking system make a whole lot of sense. Because in the Genesis version, it's like the ranking is just like an insult to injury because it's like you play through this game and it's just like, oh, it's a slow slog and then here's it like giving you a ranking and it's like what's the point of this but you play through the arcade version that's like you blast through it in like 25 minutes that is a crazy fast game and so they added an a rank system at the end just to kind of like make you i don't know just just give some sort of incentive just like some sort of overriding meta narrative and you know what it makes sense because 25 minutes it's like <laughs> you're basically doing a speed run every time you play one of these games heck you're trying to get all the kill things and you're trying to get all the instant kills and i mean again it's it's fast and effective and efficient so i mean you're basically trying to do a speed run every time you play it so you're probably getting like a whole bunch of points for it anyway and it's like all of a sudden all of your goals are aligned and it's like it just makes sense it just makes sense <laughs> everybody always talks about 
I think it's Super Metroid is the one that gave you like the timer at the end and it said it's like hey you it's like you did well to beat the game but could you beat the game faster but I kind of wonder was Golden Axe I mean they don't give you a timer but they give you a ranking and I'm pretty sure if you went through the game faster because again dying is slow then uh you get a better ranking and so I wonder if Golden Axe could arguably be considered that first speedrun game. And plus two at 25 minutes, I mean, that is a very palatable speedrun, even if you have essentially no skill. Because, like, Super Metroid, it's like, well, if you have no skill and you're playing through it, I mean, it's like, what, three, two hours each each go? And it's like, that that adds up, especially if you screw up midway through. But, I mean, Golden Axe, it's like, dang. <laughs> It's 25 minutes, and it's like you screw up. It's like, oh, whatever. Might as well finish through just to get some reps against Death Adder. And you play again. Although it is very weird that, like, there's no weird Capcom ghouls and ghosts gimmick at the end where it's like, oh, but you weren't playing hard enough or whatever, and Death Adder revives and then still has the king, queen, or whatever. Like, nope, you, you fight Death Adder, and, I mean, he's pretty tanky. He uses magic against you, which almost feels unfair, but you beat him and he's dead. It's it's weird like that. <laughs> I think I'm just getting confused because the Golden Axe version, like, you could set the difficulty to easy, but I also believe that it wouldn't... Uh, Genesis version, sorry. You could set the difficulty to easy, and I believe that if you beat the game on easy, it, it wouldn't quite 100% count it. But, like, whatever, man. Whatever. Golden Axe. Golden Axe. And it's great because Gillian Thunderhead even literally has a golden axe. <laughs> they thought of everything. Because in the Genesis version, he has like a silver axe. And it's like, wow. It's just so many strikes against the Genesis version. It almost makes you wonder why does this exist? But it does kind of make me wonder about this like parallel game development economy where it's like, I assume you have to have your A team working on the arcade, like the arcade ports, games, whatever. Sorry. Uh, on the actual like arcade games themselves, because those are your like your real money makers. But like, I don't know, I guess they're like diversifying with these sort of like home consoles. So you've got to have people developing for that. But like, I don't know. Do you, do you put your like B team on that or do you just like mix them up? I don't know. And I'm strangely now kind of curious about like how video game development worked back then well i'm gonna go to my local library and check out a book on this topic i'm just kidding <laughs> just like you guys i'm just gonna watch a bunch of youtube videos on the subject so on that note this cat's got a scat